All right, we are live. Welcome everybody. Super excited to be here with you. As everybody hops onto the live stream, uh, comment below, let me know where you're watching from. For those of you who've never met me before, I'm Avery Ford. It's really, really great to meet you. I am the creative director here at Tribe of Buyers with Andrew and Brad and the entire team. And I thought I'd go live today and do a little free training for you guys. Uh, about the three stages of organic marketing and how you can understand where you're at in your growth as a business owner and figure out exactly what strategies are going to get you to the next level in your business, in your marketing, in your sales. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Super excited to be with you. Some of you I've met in the past at Tribe of Buyers Live, at our masterminds, but if we haven't ever met before, uh, say hey in the comments. Let me know where you are watching from. And we're going to dive in. So the kind of real reason that I'm doing this training for you is to create clarity for you. I see a lot of people, you know, in our group when we're having discussions here about marketing and growing your business, and I see people asking questions, and at our events like Tribe of Buyers Live and our masterminds and master classes. One of the biggest issues that I see is that it's not that people don't know the strategies that they need to implement in order to grow their business. It's that most of us are so overwhelmed and bombarded with content, with messages, with different tactics and shiny objects that we kind of get really stuck. And we don't have a way of ascertaining what we should be focused on at our current stage of business growth and what's actually going to move the needle the most for us. So that's what this training is really about. I want to actually give you some tools that you can use to figure out where are you in your journey and based on where you're at, what exact strategies can you use to start moving that needle to get to that next level of revenue for yourself and your business. So this is really going to be for you if you are like I have been, like many of our clients have been in the past, if you feel like you're kind of like throwing spaghetti at the wall, trying different marketing tactics, uh, and every month it feels like, well, let me try this or let me try that and see what works. And it feels like you just wish someone would just give you the roadmap, right? Uh, most of us as entrepreneurs, we're really great implementers. We're really great at taking fast action. Um, the people that I've seen, what we're not great at is not having a real plan, not having a roadmap. And in online marketing today, that's often the thing that's missing. People will throw tactics and strategies and tell you you need to build this funnel or run these ads or do this or do that uh, without giving you context, without actually taking into consideration where you are. And so you feel stuck. You feel kind of overwhelmed. You don't know what's going to work for you. You don't know if the things you see other people implementing are going to work for your particular business, for the type of clients that you help and the type of work that you do. Uh, so I see a lot of people struggle with that. And it's my job as the creative director of Tribe of Buyers to craft content and create experiences for our clients that help clear away that confusion and overwhelm and show you the simplest shortest, most direct route to what you want. So that's what I want to do today. So we're going to dive in. I'll kind of keep, uh, Dano, good to see you. Uh, I'll keep an eye on the chat as best I can. It's a little hard as I'm sh screen sharing and going through training, but a couple of things. Uh, if you want a copy of my slides, stick around to the end uh, and I will tell you how to get a copy of my slide deck. And I'm also going to stay on at the end of this so that we can actually workshop together uh, and I can answer some questions for you based on today's training. Because I don't want this to be intellectual. I want you to actually get something of value that you can um, use and take with you. So 
we're going to really talk about the three-stage organic marketing model today. And what this is really all about is uncovering the reason that most entrepreneurs don't reach seven figures, right? Most entrepreneurs, and this might be you, uh, one in the chat, if this is resonating with you, most entrepreneurs are kind of operating blind, right? You are Frankensteining different strategies and things together to try to hit your goal. And you don't really have a clear plan of action. You're doing what seems right in the moment. You're doing the thing that seems best uh, and that might change week to week or month to month or sometimes day to day. If you have a really uh, frustrating day, you might throw something out and throw something else at the wall. So it really is like we make that joke, but it's true. It's like throwing spaghetti at a wall and seeing what sticks, right? The underlying thing beneath this is that you as the entrepreneur, as the business owner, are in information overwhelm and you actually don't know what strategy to use and when. And you don't know why certain strategies work or don't work for your business, which can end up being super, super frustrating, right? You will often, one in the chat, if this is you or this sounds familiar, uh, oftentimes you will see people kind of sharing their success stories or you see people posting about things that have worked for them and when you try to implement the same thing, you can't get it to work and you don't know, you're kind of left in the dark wondering like, did I implement it wrong? Was this, you know, a strategy that only works for a certain industry? And people, when they're teaching you as marketers and educators, they're not actually giving you tools to figure out why something works for your business or not. And lastly, like this is the most important one. If you're growing your business, I want you to think about all the skill sets that are required for you to succeed as a marketer, as a salesperson, as a coach, and as a teacher, right? There are a lot of them. And the biggest mistake that I see many people making, many courses and programs that try to help coaches and entrepreneurs like you, the biggest mistake that I see people making is not accounting for the fact that in order to make some of these complex marketing strategies work, the underlying truth, the kind of hidden secret that no one talks about is there, there is an entire set of skills that are required that often take years to master in order to make something like a really complicated funnel with Facebook ad campaigns running to it work right? That's pretty self-explanatory. Think about that. Like if we think about something like uh, a funnel, you have a funnel, you have Facebook ads running to that funnel. Maybe that funnel is to something like a webinar or a VSL. Think about all of the skills that you as a marketer and a salesperson need to have mastered in order to make that funnel work. You have to have really good copywriting skills, right? Uh, the message on the ads and the landing pages and in the presentation has to capture your audience's attention, get them to stop scrolling, get them to take action. You have to have an offer or a hook for that particular funnel or that call to action that is irresistible. You have to you know, have your brand dialed in. You have to have the sequence of content in the funnel dialed in and understand the psychological journey of that buyer. You also have to be really great at presenting, really great at pitching in order to make that funnel work and then get people on the sales call. Do you have follow-up processes? Can you convert on the sales call effectively? So just in like one funnel, when we think about the way most marketers are teaching you to try to build your business, there is an underlying uh, reality that's not being acknowledged, which is they are often building these complex systems and creating these successes on a foundation of skills that were built over years. And you may just be starting out or you're maybe at your first 10 or 20K month and you haven't mastered those skills. And so it makes sense that that strategy isn't going to work as well for you first time out of the gate. But if no one ever explained it to you that way, if no one ever kind of made you think about not just implementing strategy, but building skill sets, then you're probably going to blame yourself. 
and think that it was something you did wrong. And I see that that's what a lot of people do, right? They try to implement complex strategies. They try to go for the gold and like, I'm going to run some Facebook ads to a funnel. I'm going to do what all these other marketers are telling me. And when it falls flat and it doesn't work, they beat themselves up. I don't want you to do that. Here's what you really need to succeed. I think in order for any entrepreneur, organically or otherwise, to build a seven-figure business, there are some really core things that you need to have. You need a strong foundation, personally and in business. How do you manage yourself? How do you manage your time? How do you operate? Because your ability to implement effectively is going to depend on how you are taking care of yourself and managing yourself as a business owner, but also as a human, right? You need a scalable business structure. It's another thing that I think a lot of people really, really miss. Before I can even kind of talk to you about the stages of growth and what happens in each of them, we need to make sure that your business is set up to scale. If you implement a really fantastic strategy that brings you in 30 new clients, but your business structure isn't equipped to take on 30 clients in a week, something's gonna break. So you need a business structure that's scalable. You need a proven strategy, yes, but you need a process for mastering the skills required to implement that strategy at each level of scaling. Lastly, you need a roadmap. You don't just need a set of strategies. You need to know what to implement at what time, in what order, and a community is always helpful. That's what we have here in this Facebook group, a community of people who are on the same journey as you, right? So this is my takeaway for you. The thing I really want you to understand is like knowing the systems isn't enough. Knowing the strategy isn't enough. Without the structure and the skill sets, you're kind of stuck at the starting line. You've got one third of the equation. So how do we determine which systems and strategies to implement when? How do we know as a business owner what we should be focused on at what time in order to hit our goals? This is where the three stages of growth come in. What I've identified, Andrew and the team have identified after years of working with hundreds of people is that there are really kind of three main stages of growth as an entrepreneur in the online space. And we call those traction, leverage, and scaling. So I wanna review them with you and kind of dive into each one and actually show you what you should be focused on and what strategies you're gonna use at each stage. So traction, leverage, and scale kind of look like a ramp, right, in your growth. In the traction phase, you're usually starting out, I'd say between zero to 30K a month, you're in traction, meaning you're just starting to get momentum going with your marketing. You're just starting to really figure things out, dial things in, and feel like you're making progress. Then you have leverage, which is where you're able to start doing some more scalable leveraged marketing strategies. And finally, at scale, everything is dialed in. When you kind of start to cross the 60 to 80K a month range, you start to get towards that million dollar a year rate, things become much more about maintenance and systemization and optimization than about innovation, right? In traction, we are testing and validating. In the leverage stage, we are innovating. And then at scale, we are optimizing. We're taking the things that we know work for us and really scaling them. Remember, each stage isn't just focused on revenue or strategy. That's what most of the coaching programs and things and trainings you've probably done have focused on are just the strategies. The reason some of those haven't worked is because you're also focused on skill sets that you need to be building in each stage in order to weather all of the things required to hit the next level. So stage one, traction. Hey, Eli, good to see you. So one in the chat, if that is resonating with you, if you're tracking, you're kind of understanding and it makes sense to you that you need to pair not just strategy, but you also need skills and structure at each level of your growth. Yeah, exactly. Good. So 
Let's talk about stage one, traction. In stage one, in traction, you're really focused on what we call the Facebook organic marketing system. And the parameters in stage one are typically zero to around the 30K a month in revenue mark. That may be a lot of you right now. You may be at the five or 10, you've had a 20K, maybe you've gotten close to a 30K month, but you haven't been able to get past it. You, that means you're in traction, right? You typically have a, an ideal client, one core offer that you're focused on selling and one audience growth channel that you are focused on marketing in. If you are in traction right now and you have six different offers that you're trying to sell and you're trying to do Facebook and Instagram and uh, TikTok and Pinterest, if you're trying to market on all these platforms at once, that might be part of the reason that you can't get past that revenue ceiling right? Because at this stage, you are still figuring out what works for you in your messaging. In traction, really, in essence, if you look along the right-hand side here, what you're focused on in traction is building your audience through audience building activities, bringing those audience, back, audience members back to your personal profile. Often that's here on Facebook using content on your personal profile to generate conversations, moving people from conversation to a call, and then closing that call for a sale for your core offer, right? Until you master that sequence, do not pass go, do not collect $200 or $30,000, right? The reason that you're stuck is most of you are trying to like really complicate this. How you can keep this simple and actually make this the year that you get past that revenue ceiling is focus. Choose one ideal client, one core offer, right? If you need help with that, hit me up below. That's what I do all day. One audience growth channel, and you're focused on growing your audience consistently with audience growth and engagement activities. You're going out to where your audience is, engaging, bringing people back to your profile where you can nurture them with value-based content, get them to raise their hand with strategic calls to action so that you can qualify them and get them into a sales call, get them on your calendar, right? It stays really, really simple in this stage because I believe if you can't get to 20 to 30K a month just with these simple things, and really what it is is content, right? You're mastering at this stage foundational skills, the psychology of your market, making successful offers, having a message that resonates, and creating content that really taps into the desires, the needs, the pains, the problems of your audience. You're also mastering prospecting. Your ability to, when someone raises their hand, assess whether they're a fit and book them on a call and then close the call, right? Sales skills. Without those skills, like without really understanding your market, knowing what offers your audience wants and creating a really great core offer that you can just sell and sell and sell, you really don't have the ability to make more complex systems work. Then like, that's kind of self-explanatory when you really think about it. Like if I can't make a simple Facebook post, and get a bunch of people to raise their hand for what I want, why on earth would I think that I'm gonna be able to build a complex marketing funnel that's gonna work? I'm not. I'm going to carry the same mistakes over into that funnel and waste a bunch of time and maybe money, right? These skills, like the ability to write really great content, the ability to make successful offers, to prospect and close people on demand again and again and again and again are the biggest factor in a marketer's ability to succeed long term. If you look at almost every successful online business owner who has scaled to seven figures and beyond, they all started with these foundational skills. They understand and still understand how to create content that incites engagement, how to get people to raise their hand for what they're offering, 
to how to qualify, prospect, and sell. You can build a million dollar business just with those skills, right? Your primary objective at this stage, like we are always talking in organic marketing machine and seven figure CEO, our programs, what's the objective? What are you trying to hit? Your primary objective at stage one is really, can I hit 30K two months in a row? Or can I sell 30 people into a core offer? Right. That's what we're really going for here. Those are the measures by which we can assess that our marketing is successful, our offers are resonating, our sales process is dialed in. Many entrepreneurs have scaled to seven figures just by mastering the fundamentals taught in stage one. This marketing system is how Andrew grew Tribe of Buyers to 100K a month and more. Literally by mastering his ability to build an audience organically, create content that really got people to engage, caused them to raise their hand, and then got them on a sales call. 100K a month, just from that. Really simple, right? Stage two. Moving on. So stage two is leverage. You may not be ready for stage two, but I want you to conceptually understand where you're going and have the roadmap. So you know, if someone, if you are thinking about implementing some strategies that are stage two strategies, but you're not there yet, now you have a frame of reference and you can say, nope, Avery told me I'm not ready. I'm going to keep my focus on the fundamentals. But for those of you who might be in stage two, stage two is leverage. And really, this is where you're getting between 30 to 80K a month in revenue is typically where stage two is. You still have a single ideal client that you're targeting, but usually in stage two, this is where you start to have more than one offer. You have what we call a core offer and an MRR offer. An MRR just means monthly recurring revenue or a back-end offer. Because by the time you reach stage two, most of you will have run groups of clients through your core offer and are ready to now ascend them into a back-end offer. But you're still at this stage focusing on multiple audience growth channels, right? Or excuse me, I lied. You're still focusing on one audience growth channel at stage two. So here's what that looks like. In stage two, you are often launching your Facebook group as a lead generation stream. You're still growing your audience consistently, but that audience is now being funneled to two different areas, right? You're bringing people to your profile. You're also bringing people to your community or your group. Inside of your profile and your group, you are systemizing the lead gen and conversion process. Many times this means building a sales and setter team. At this stage, you should no longer be taking all the sales calls and setting all the calls and prospecting yourself. People should be doing that for you because you're now starting to step back into the CEO seat. Stage two is also where you start building and launching what we call core conversion content. Conversion content, meaning building a masterclass, a webinar, a five-day challenge. That allows you to go from prospecting one-to-one, -one, meaning using content on your profile or content in your group to get people to raise their hand and then prospect and sell them, to prospecting and selling one-to-many. This is a core skill set, and it is the core skill set that you're developing in stage two. In stage one, where we're really focused on developing our messaging, our content, the psychology of our buyer, in stage two, we're developing ourselves. We're developing ourselves as a presenter, as a speaker, as a salesperson, so that we can go from closing one to one to closing one to many. And that's a skill that's going to serve us well into the rest of our entrepreneurial career, right? So we're building and launching that core conversion content, and we're optimizing that content to drive leads and sales and grow things like email lists and our messenger lists and things like that. We also in stage two will start to turn that conversion content evergreen, right? For most of you, 
if you are in this stage, what I want to encourage you to do is pick a single conversion strategy. Maybe for you, that might be a webinar or a masterclass. Pick one, and I want you to run that conversion strategy again and again and again until you master it. And then you can turn it into an evergreen asset in stage three. But the biggest mistake people make in stage two is jumping strategy. They'll do a masterclass and they'll come over here and try a different strategy. And what you're cheating yourself on is the ability to optimize and develop real mastery of a single way of converting your audience. Think about um, riding a bike or learning a certain sport. You master it by practice repetition over and over and over. You're building the muscles. You're building the muscle memory. It's the same thing with this. You're practicing a skill set over and over and over until you get really good at it. And then you optimize it and turn it evergreen. Creating leverage looks like shifting from selling individually to selling on stage. We mentioned that. Creating can't miss conversion events, right? We want to be able to create ideas for conversion events, launch those ideas to our audience, drive signups with our organic marketing, and then pitch people at those events, provide them tons of value, really give them an experience of working with us and then close them. With a successful conversion asset, what really starts to happen in stage two and what makes this the growth really start to become exponential is you can often create your previous month's revenue in a single day. In a previous month, if you close 10 or 15 clients, now you get 50, 50 people in a room for a training of yours where you provide incredible value to them and make a genuine invitation for them to continue working with you. You can close 10 or 15 of them that day. That's why leverage is so important. In the leverage stage, you're using promotional cycles. And we can talk more about that. I'm gonna talk a little bit about this in our masterclass next week. If you haven't signed up, I'll tell you how to do that. But creating promotional cycles with a conversion asset is a core marketing staple. You master this, you master leverage, and you can really stop chasing shiny objects and focus on optimization of a proven process instead, right? So that's stage two all along the right-hand side. That's kind of the flow of stage two. Now we get to stage three. Things really, really, really start to get fun. In stage three, now we're scaling. We're no longer innovating as much. Stage one and stage two are really about testing, innovation, figuring out what our strengths are, doubling down on those. In stage three, we know what our strengths are and we're going to leverage those strengths to really systemize, optimize and scale. So in stage three, we're now ready finally as we start to approach the 100K a month mark to use paid advertising in conjunction with our organic marketing to create a self-feeding system, right? At stage three, you're using paid ads to help grow your Facebook group, grow your audience. There are specific paid ad campaigns that I'm not gonna get into, but you're using that system to scale past the 100K a month mark and really scale what you mastered in stage two to scale the conversion assets that you mastered. So this is where you really get into having multiple audience growth channels and having multiple conversion assets. You still have your core offer and your back end offer, but now there might be multiple front end entry points for those that your ads are leading to. So in stage three, you're really scaling, you're finding an agency to run your paid traffic and you've got conversion assets ready because you mastered that in stage two and you optimize hire your marketing manager and really shift into the CEO seat. Obviously, I'm not going to go in depth here because the very smallest fraction of people are at stage three, right? So it's not super relevant to you. A few things to keep in mind. 
as you ascend through each stage and how you can take kind of what you're learning today and apply it to yourself to actually start to get results. Remember that each stage builds on the skills and assets created before it. Trust the process. If you are at that zero to 30K a month mark, be okay with relaxing and trusting that your focus right now is supposed to be on organic audience growth, content creation, messenger prospecting and sales. And don't try to force yourself into something more complicated before you're ready, right? At that stage, what I want you to really be able to do is know that you can post a piece of content and get sales. One piece of content to sale. When you master that, if you're able to understand your audience so well that you can create content that gets them to raise their hand every time, the fear and the panic of where's the next client going to come from? Where's the next client going to come from? Evaporate. Because you weren't just focused on strategy, you were focused on skill set. You mastered a skill set of understanding your audience so well that you could craft an invitation to them, post that invitation. Hey, I'm doing this thing. Hey, I've got this training. Are you interested? And get a ton of people to raise their hand every time. And you know that those trainings are going to convert people. Master the fundamentals. Like if you can take something away from today's training, what I want it to be is that if you focus on the fundamentals, you will never fail. If you skip the fundamentals, you will stumble around and bump into things and try different strategies and ditch things because they're not working. And a year from now or two years from now, you'll still be in the same spot. I don't want that. So remember that you're building skills and you're building assets in stages. And next. Not to call anyone out, this might be you. I get into this habit sometimes too. Don't focus heavily on theory and having everything planned out. If there's anything you've learned from attending any of our events or any of our master classes, uh, you learn that we are heavy on the implementation. We want to learn something. And as soon as we learn it and we have a decent grasp on it, we want to take imperfect action, implement as best we can. We know that it's not going to be perfect, but that act of implementation is going to get us into motion. It's going to get us into momentum. You want to rack up wins and momentum early and often in your business. So for those of you, like if you're watching this training today and you don't have enough sales calls on the calendar, you don't have any momentum. What I want you to do is take in perfect action by asking yourself, who is in my pipeline or in my audience now that I can reach out to and have a conversation today? See how they're doing. Invite them to a call to catch up or check in. Most people don't hit their goals, not because they don't know what to do, but because they get so caught up in their head in overthinking and spinning their wheels that they put off taking action to the next day and the next day and the next day and the next day. Don't be that person. When you learn something, immediately take it and put it into action. So for you, my task is based on your current position, which stage are you in right now? Are you in traction, leverage, or scale? Put in the chat for me below. Put traction. I'm in traction, I'm in leverage, or I am in scale. And based on that, based on which stage you're at, Here's what I want you to focus on. I've got some assignments for you. So those of you who are in traction, I want you to think about who in your audience you can reach out today to have a conversation with. Who is already in your pipeline that you've been avoiding getting on a call? Or you have been avoiding making an offer in your Facebook group, right? It's as simple as that. If you are in the leverage stage, 
my task for you. Jackie says traction. Fantastic. If you are in the leverage stage, my challenge for you today, the one thing that you can do today is pick a single strategy for converting your audience and focus on it until you develop mastery. Do not try to implement more things. Take one thing and focus on it. If you're in the scaling stage, I want you to look at where can you optimize? Look at everything you're doing and ask yourself, are you tracking your numbers? And if not, can you start? Right? So next steps for you. Next week on Wednesday, we are doing a free three hour masterclass on the seven figure organic business. We're gonna dive into specifically the traction and leverage stages. We're actually going to teach you step-by-step -step the strategies and we're going to implement together on the call. We never do trainings where we fire hose you with content. We always do trainings where we learn a little bit, implement a little bit, have some Q and A and some coaching, learn a little bit more, implement a little bit more Q and A and coaching. So that's what we're doing for three hours next week on Wednesday, the 24th from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. We're gonna walk you through the step-by-step -step strategies in traction and leverage, specifically how to convert leads, right? How to get people to raise their hand for what you want, get them into a conversation and get calls booked. So if you are in traction and that is you or you are in leverage, and you need help figuring out what should I be focused on? How do I actually move to my next level? Just hashtag me in the comments below. If you haven't signed up, we'll have someone reach out to you, help you get signed up for that masterclass. And we can spend three hours together working on this as a team with you, me, Brad here from Tribe of Buyers and the rest of the Tribe of Buyers team. So with that, I want to open it up for questions. I know Jackie is here. Thank you for being here. Uh, Cynthia is here. What questions do you have? I've got a few minutes before the top of the hour. So I'm happy to answer any questions about where you're at and kind of what your next steps are. So let me know. And there's a little bit of a delay. So I will ramble for a minute while you put your question in. If there aren't any questions, we'll wrap. Um, but just know there's probably like a 30 second delay between me speaking and then me seeing your comments there down below in the chat. Cynthia, how's it going? So let me know what questions. Do you have a question about the three stages or kind of how to think about strategies for you? Ask me now. That'd be terrific. Uh, fantastic. Awesome, Jackie. I'm looking forward to seeing you there. That's going to be, it's going to be really fun. I always love our events. I love working with people, getting to coach back and forth and helping everybody implement. Uh, it, it's one of my favorite things that we do. Your shyness prefers not doing calls. Will this help with that? Yes. So depending on the type of offer that you have, uh, you may not need to do sales calls. Uh, there are people who close all the time in Messenger alone. Um, the real thing, Cynthia, for you is depending on the price of your offer, what we're often trying to do is build a leveraged offer, which usually is higher ticket because we want it to be scalable. So if you're not going to pitch on sales calls, you have a couple of options. One you can find a salesperson who can close for you, right? Salespeople work on commission. There are plenty of amazing salespeople who, if you can get your leads dialed in and your marketing process dialed in, someone else can close the call. Uh, you don't have to hop on the sales call. Andrew doesn't hop on any sales calls and hasn't in years, right? The second option, Cynthia, if you don't want to do sales calls, would be focusing on a conversion asset, like a conversion event. 
you could use something like master classes or challenges or any other type of leverage conversion event to get a bunch of people in a room regularly and pitch and close them right there, right? Events, virtual or in-person conversion events, as we like to call them, allow you to be able to pitch from stage and close people. And there are ways to do that even for a high ticket offer, even if you're talking about the 10 or, you know, $10,000 is, is definitely a high ticket offer, but even for maybe your offer is three or five or $6,000, you could actually pitch that to a room and close it in a conversion event. It's totally doable. People do it all the time. Uh, inside of uh, our programs, we are lucky enough to have a guest coach. His name is Eli Wild, and I think you might be watching this training, but he was Tony Robbins' number one salesperson for many, many years. And he talks a lot about the psychology of selling from stage. And if you think about people like a Tony or other presenters, people who are pitching from stage or Andrew pitching from stage at Tribal Buyers Live or our events, uh, people are buying right there in the room, right? Signing up for the program without having to be on a sales call. So totally, totally possible. You, Cynthia says, I love webinars. I've done over 300. Fantastic. And that's the, that's the ticket. It sounds like then it's just a matter of getting the audience building activity and the nurturing activity dialed up to a point where you have tons of hands raised for those webinars every time you do them, right? So that would probably be the focus, making sure the offer is dialed in, the angle and the messaging are dialed in, uh, that people are raising their hands and then cranking up the audience building. Yeah, good. Awesome, what else? What other questions? Then we're in the chat, we've got a couple more minutes. And again, just so I don't forget, uh, for those of you who are catching the replay, if you get to this point in the replay, hashtag me in the comments below, we'll get you all the details for next Wednesday's masterclass, 10 a.m. Pacific time. 11, 12, 1 p.m. Eastern time. Time zones are not my favorite. And we're gonna spend three hours together on that class. Awesome. So that's gonna wrap me up. Hashtag me in the comments below. Uh, I will see you at next week's masterclass. I'll probably see you before then. I'm here in the group active quite often. Uh, and until then, keep it real. I'll see you here in the Facebook group. Uh, if you have any questions, about the masterclass, let us know below. We'd be happy to answer and I'll see you there. Bye everybody.